Hey guys, welcome back to another Honkai Star Wars video. The second character of version 1.3 is going to be Fu Xuan, another integral cast member of the Xianzhou storyline and a very interesting one in gameplay. While not boasting quite the same reputation as the units that came before her, she throws a wrench into Star Wars current meta all the same if not more. This game is taking a much more cavalier approach to power creep than Genshin to say the least. Some of you may have seen that meme I reposted on my community page where we had Blade who is one of the best AoE DPS units in the game, followed by Kafka whose damage ceiling could potentially surpass his, followed by Don Hung whose damage ceiling unequivocally surpassed both of theirs. Moreover, support units have also dramatically raised the bar in their own respect, as evident in retrospect by Luo Cha utterly outclassing Bailu despite my initial assumptions that they were around equal in value. Fushuan is going to be the first widely available 5-star preservation unit in Star Road, immediately putting her in contention with the current best tank, Japart, who has more than been credit to team for players fortunate enough to get their hands on him. So for this character discussion, we're going to look through Fushuan's abilities in gameplay to gauge how she stacks against the competition, and more importantly, if she will continue the trend of pushing the envelope of Star Road's power scaling. While a turn-based game compared to Genshin's open-world real-time action, conventional wisdom still holds true in Star Wars to some extent, in that shielding usually takes precedence over recovery if we compare one to another. We had a few units who intrinsically elevate the importance of healing by proportionally tying it to their damage output like Blade, which is a great way to employ such a tactic. However, with the absence of invincibility frames and the option to avoid attacks via dodging, damage is more assured in the latter title, further highlighting the importance of some form of defense. Healing is naturally better for long-term survivability as, even with a strong shielder, your team can and will inevitably take damage from attacks, so having a way to keep your party members topped off ensures you can hold out indefinitely. However, shielding's main advantage is that of short-term survivability, effectively serving as bonus maximum health which means you can withstand amounts of burst damage that far exceed your character's total health pools. All things considered, Star Rail did a finer job balancing out the reasons to use both healing and shielding, but so far it's been agreed upon that healing is ever so slightly more necessitated, especially due in part to the accompanying debuff cleanses you see on Natasha and Locha, whereas a tank like Chapard cannot dispel status effects on his party without external intervention like preservation blessings and simulated universe. As the first, non-standard, and therefore accessible 5-star preservation unit, Fushuan will set the gold standard of what a tank is meant to be, and so far I would argue she sets a very very high bar. Given that she's a support and not damage dealer, her quantum element is more nominal than anything else. The focus lies in her abilities. Curiously, her basic attack is I believe the first of its kind to not scale off her attack power, rather Fushuan deals quantum damage equal to her maximum health. This can allow her to deal measurably more damage than the likes of Japard whose basic attack works off his attack stat, which he never specs into unless you count his ascension passive. Although even with the HP scaling, don't expect it to do that much with her basic attack. Her skill encompasses her entire playstyle though. How it works is that for the next 3 turns, a portion of all damage taken by other teammates will instead be redirected to her. This is different from and better than Fire Trailblazer's taunt for a variety of reasons. Most attacks with major enemies and bosses consist of blast moves which deal area damage, so even if you draw aggro from an enemy, there's still the danger of adjacent party members getting struck too. Fushuan's protection is more of a cover type ability that you see on tanks and a lot of turn based RPGs. In addition, she gives bonus health to her team based on a portion of her own max health and boosts their crit rate by 12% at rank 10. This is the big distinction between Fushuan and Japard. Japard's a tank with a more debuff slash breaker connotation to him. On top of giving your party a tremendous shield, his skill can freeze enemies which can come in handy, but unfortunately he provides no additional benefits to his team, he's all shields. Meanwhile, Fushuan's a tank with a more buffing connotation to her, so you can think of her as a Harmony Abundance Preservation Unit while Japard is Nihility Preservation. Further emphasizing that notion is her ultimate, damaging all enemies and giving her a charge of her passive talent. Speaking of, her passive talent's a doozy. So long as she's alive, her entire party has unconditional damage mitigation by default. Technically, this still falls within the realm of defense, but seeing as it's passively in effect throughout pretty much the entire battle, that should be valued in a different format than temporary defense. In any case, Fushuan is a built-in Luocha skill proc, whereupon if she takes damage that drops her below half HP, she recovers a huge amount of that missing health. She automatically stores one charge at the beginning of a fight, up to a cap of two, and can replenish her supply with every cast of her ultimate, making her basically indestructible so long as she can use her ultimate every so often. And you definitely want to make that a priority since her second ascension pass it gives a small yet meaningful amount of healing to her entire team. While 5% max health doesn't seem like a whole lot, considering she'll have easily double if not triple the health pool of the rest of the team, that's gonna be like 10 to 15% max health worth of healing plus a flat amount. And remember, while she's alive, she gives up to 18% damage reduction at rank 10 to the entire party, and she redirects 65% of all damage taken by other allies to herself, essentially giving like 75% damage mitigation to her entire party if we combine her skill and talent. That ascension passive healing is meant to recover any sliver of damage a team sustains after the fact. The biggest advantage of Fushuan's protection is that she essentially has a permanent shield up for her party with no hard cap on how much she can absorb. 
As someone who routinely uses Tripart, I often get frustrated when the enemy team or boss focuses on one person and exhausts their entire shield while the rest of my team still has a full bar. Fushuan's ability to redirect damage from her other allies to her allows you to extract more value out of AoE shields due to her matrix suppression is technically not being a shield. If we compare raw survivability to raw survivability, Fushuan's protection is in most cases superior to Japart's. One, her defense is attached to a skill, not ultimate, giving a better uptime, especially considering she only needs to use her skill once every three turns. That makes her pretty SP efficient. Two, she has actual recovery built into her kit. Not much, but enough to matter. Chapard's a weird one when it comes to self-sustainability. Obviously, it depends on the situation, but in the right circumstances, despite not being able to heal, he'll never need to. If you enter a battle with this technique active, you can give yourself a decent starting shield to buy time for your ultimate shield. With enough defense, his party shield is so massive that he can easily stay intact from one cast to the next, practically giving you infinite shielding and subsequently no need for healing as your team will never take damage. But there is still the possibility that you will get hurt, which is why Chapard tends to need to be accompanied by a healer. Fushuan, however, does not. With sufficient investment, she can be tanky enough to make your entire team nearly impossible to kill while providing buffs to her team. Also, if heaven forbid Chapard gets debuffed and is unable to use his ultimate, you're screwed. Meanwhile, Fushuan has that covered. Her third passive talent lets your party nullify one crowd control debuff per use of her skill, preventing her, or rather any of your party members, from being disrupted, which in turn boosts your team's DPS as there's no chance of interruption. So there are a lot of things that Fushuan has that not only set her apart from Japard but make her superior to him in that way. Not to discredit Bellabog's Golden Boy or anything, he's still a fantastic tank and you should be more than happy to get and use him because his shielding is honestly overkill for like 95% of the game. But comparing individual to individual, it's incredible how much coverage Fushuan has. And this is all with the assumption that you're banking entirely on her own faculty, not light cones, relics, or anything like that. Light cones are pretty game-changing for some units, as they provide a hefty dose of passive buffs that can make up for their deficiencies. In this case, her inability to create an actual shield. Despite being preservation, Fushuan has no shields, which ironically makes her incapable of tapping into her sim universe path bonuses. But this can be circumvented through texture of memories, giving a shield to her whenever she's attacked and has no shield. Her own personal light cone is interesting too, boosting her max health and energy recharge while giving a 9-15% damage mitigation buff to her party whenever she takes damage, which if you remember will always happen whether she gets hit or someone else does thanks to her skill. So if you factor that in, plus the talent damage mitigation, plus the redirect, plus her own self-regeneration, I sincerely doubt you'll find a scenario where your entire party sustains so much damage that it kills her and then breaks through to your other party members. If that weren't enough, her light gun restores your party to basically full at the start of every fight. So if you're taking on multiple weights of enemies, you have a fully self-sustaining party. Fushan's basically a healer and tank put together. The only thing she can't do is dispel debuffs, but at the same time she doesn't have to thanks to her crowd control shield. There has to be something I'm missing because it almost feels like she does everything. She has tanking, quote unquote, healing, buffing, debuff immunity, she literally does everything except debuff the enemy team. If you get into her idolins, she presses all aspects even further. E1 gives 30% bonus crit damage, so with this, she gives 12% crit rate and 30% crit damage to all allies, meaning, if you put her with Branya, Fushan gives more crit damage to her, who then gives more crit damage to everyone else. E2 officially makes the team invincible by giving a single-use death immunity, not resurrection, death immunity. It doesn't count as being knocked down. E4 gives Fushuan incredible energy recharge, leading to more ultimate casts, which leads to more healing for herself and their party, while E6 turns her ultimate into Blade's ultimate, where she stores all HP lost by her team to increase the strength of her ultimate damage by that amount. Sorry to keep bringing Genshin into this, but rather than Blade, Fushuan's design is what Diaz should have been. It's kinda crazy how they basically had the same playstyle, only Fushuan's was thought out 10 times better. That aside, Fushuan's legitimately busted. Not sure how to feel about a girl who's not even tall enough to go to Six Flags face tanking everything for the team, but gameplay-wise, she will easily overshadow Japard in many circumstances. Again, not to say that Japard is suddenly useless, but for virtually every scenario other than needing someone to apply freeze, she has more going for her. I haven't tested her extensively, but there's still a part of me that thinks you will need a healer since even though you'll be losing HP very, very, very slowly, chances are you'll still lose health that her ascension passive alone can't cover. Although if memory serves, people are thinking of running a mono Kana team with her, Sila, Silverwolf, and Lynx. But frankly, there's no rule saying you can't go Fushuan and Japard together if you really want to turn your brain off and auto battle through everything. Whatever the case, what makes her stand out a lot better in my personal opinion than any other preservation or abundance unit we have so far is that she provides buffs in addition to her protection. We already talked about how Japard doesn't really offer any supportive benefit beyond raw shielding and the occasional freeze, while Luota only provides healing and dispels. Granted, more healing than you'll ever need, but outside of Idolins, Luota doesn't give any stat buffs, whereas Fushuan gives crit rate, a very useful stat for any carry, which is almost everybody but Kafka. 
She's definitely a must pull for anyone serious about going the distance with Star Rail. I'm a firm believer that supports will always withstand the test of time better than carries because most teams feature 3 supports and 1 carry, and supports generally scale with carries. Seeing the extent of her protective capabilities makes it highly unlikely that she'll be knocked off first place in terms of preservation units, but I mean, I said that about Blade and Kafka, only for Don Hung to be both of them by a wide margin, so maybe Star Rail will go crazy with power creep, who knows. I'm just gonna act under the assumption that every new unit is absolutely broken because I got clowned on by my friends for giving Locha a modest rating, so Fushuan is tier 0 until proven otherwise. Anyways, that's gonna be it for today. Feel free to share your thoughts on Fushuan in the comments down below whether you plan to get her or not. As always though, if you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you left a like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Varsware and join my Discord server and check out my other Honkai Star Rail character discussions if you haven't yet. But till next time, thanks so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.